Modern monetary theory? Modern monetary theory? Modern monetary theory? Modern monetary theory? Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to witness the untimely demise of our dear friend, Modern Monetary Theory. Yes, the reason we are here today is we are witnessing the death of Modern Monetary Theory. Now this has manifested itself in insane inflation, which we're all going through, uh, the pain at the pump, when we go to the grocery store, it's all around us. It, the prices are going up and up and up. We don't know what to do. And it was all caused by bad government policy and starring the Federal Reserve. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk about the death of modern monetary theory, basically what it is, how it was brought into existence, who has been pushing it for uh, all these years and how the current situation that we're in, the current dire situation that we're in, has basically caused the death of modern monetary theory as a valid theory because now we have rampant inflation and we're all feeling it and we're all suffering under it. Okay, so the first question is, what is modern monetary theory? So modern monetary theory is a macro economic framework that says basically that sovereign countries like the US, UK, Japan, Canada, which spend, tax, and borrow in their fiat currency, of which they have you know, complete control over, are not operationally controlled by revenues when it comes to uh, federal government spending. So to put it more simply, governments do not have to rely on taxes or borrowing for spending since they can print as much money as they want and they're basically monopoly issuers of their currency. Since their budgets aren't like, you know, a normal household budget like yours, their policies are not shaped by fears of a rising national debt. This basically says that governments, since they can print their own money, should be free to print as much money as they want and basically budget deficits don't matter. Many left-wing lunatics like AOC and Bernie Sanders have become uh, backers of this kind of a theory, thinking that the government can just uh, spend and print its way into prosperity. So with this modern monetary theory, or MMT, uh, many books have been written, and most famously, The Deficit Myth, Modern Monetary Theory and the Birth of the People's Economy. This was written by a lunatic called Stephanie Kelton. Um, the central idea of all of this is that governments with fiat currency under their control can print as much as they want in terms of money with just a few keystrokes and they have as much money as they need to spend because they basically cannot go broke. It's incredible that people think this, but there are actually people out there that believe that this is true. You can just print money and spend as much as you want with no constraints. Now, before we describe the current situation, it's important to understand also Keynesian economics, because in what the government has done to us in the last few years, these two concepts are intimately intertwined. Okay, so Keynesian economics focuses on using active government policy to manage aggregate demand in order to address or prevent economic recessions. Activist fiscal and monetary policy are the primary tools recommended by Keynesian economists to manage the economy and fight unemployment, and I'll also add to that, and create economic growth. So you can see from these definitions that the government has aggressively used these policies, not just since the COVID uh, downturn, but going back to the 08-09 financial crisis. So you can see going back to the 2020 
COVID epidemic, the government has been aggressively using a combination of Keynesian economic theories along with the modern monetary theory concept. We've seen trillions of dollars spent by the U.S. government. This is all deficit spending. It's all money that was borrowed and flushed into the economy uh, close to eight trillion dollars over this period including the 1.9 trillion that was recently uh, enacted by Biden when he first came into office. This massive government spending was combined with super loose Fed policy which had interest rates at zero. Uh, they were printing 120 billion dollars per month and going out and buying securities, which was just basically flushing excess liquidity into the system, all of this combined massively increased demand and caused the inflation that you're currently seeing. Now, the best way to see the effect of this is to look at M2, which is basically the money supply. This is dollars in circulation. So let's take a look at that. Okay, here you have the chart that shows the growth in M2 over the period that we're talking about. And you can see from this chart, it went from roughly 15.3 trillion up to about 22 trillion. All right, so that's roughly $6.7 trillion of growth within a little over two years, okay? Now, if you go back to 2010, you can see that it was roughly $7 trillion of growth in M2 over the previous 10-year period. So basically what we did was we increased the money supply 10 years worth in slightly more than two years. You can see that by creating that much money and flushing it into the system, combined with the government massively spending and, and borrowing uh, in a deficit matter and flushing that money into the system, increasing demand, those two things combined caused an unprecedented demand supply imbalance for goods and services. That coupled with the uh, supply constraints that came in have resulted in what we currently are seeing, which is massive, unprecedented inflation. You have to go back to the 1970s to see anything even close. So what's been the result of this modern monetary theory on steroids combined with massive government spending, i.e. the Keynesian model? Well, we've had massive growth in M2, which we just went over. In addition to that, it's caused massive inflation, currently at 8.3%, and growing. A lot of people think it's peak, but I think it's still growing. We've had a ballooning national debt, currently at $30.4 trillion. Okay, it's never been this high. Uh, during the COVID period, it uh, you know went up by, by close to $10 trillion. This uh, will have to be paid for. We can't continue to monetize this debt all the time, although modern monetary theory says that we can. In addition to the ballooning debt and ballooning budget deficit, we've seen incredible asset bubbles. Now, I've talked about this extensively on this channel, but we've seen asset bubbles in real estate. Uh, we saw unprecedented valuations in the stock market, which is currently being corrected <laughs> to everybody's pain, but uh, that is happening. And uh, in addition to that, I believe we're going to see ultimately as a consequence of all this, an economic downturn and a pretty significant one. Now what's currently happening is the Fed has come out uh, several months ago and they stated that they're gonna start reining in uh, the money printing and the incredibly loose um, Fed policy that they've had in place for many, many years. And they've done that by uh, recently raising the Fed funds rate 50 basis points. Uh, in addition, they said they're gonna stop uh, printing 120 billion a month and buying securities. That's gonna reduce liquidity in the market. 
you're already seeing the effect of that in the stock and bond markets. And then in addition, they said that eventually they're going to start reducing their balance sheet, which is currently $9 trillion. All of this is going to contribute to the ultimate demise and death of modern monetary theory because one of the criticisms of MMT, so to speak, is that if implemented too strongly and too consistently, it will cause inflation. And that is exactly what we have seen. And I hope that this puts the final nail in the coffin, so to speak, to MMT. And I hope this will finally silence some of its adherents who have been vocal in supporting it in the past. So to wrap things up here, I just want to say that this experiment with modern monetary theory has caused incredible damage to the country and to the economy. Uh, this inflation that we're currently experiencing, if left unchecked, will eventually destroy the middle class because they are the people that can least uh, afford to absorb all of these high costs. Uh, the rich will be fine, but it's virtually killing the middle class. In addition to that, it is reducing our standard of living. As everything goes up in price, we can afford fewer things. Our real income, regardless of what it is, goes down in value. Our buying power goes down and it contributes to an overall lowering of our standard of living. And finally, I'm afraid to say that it is going to ultimately cause one of the worst economic downturns we have seen in many years because inflation just kills not only economic activity as a demand destroyer, but it also completely obliterates the margins of most modern corporations because as your costs continue to go up dramatically, in some cases uh, 10 to 20% a year, there is absolutely no way you can raise your prices uh, enough to keep up with that and ultimately you'll get margin destruction. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And now what I'd really like you to do is I think you need to take a look at this video up here, which will provide you with more interesting and important information to guide you on your investment journey. Thanks, and until next time, it's Greg out.